Coming by fast. Yeah, baby. You can fly this plane all day on a 7,000 pack. Steve, going to some steep turns here. Come down a little lower, watching out for the pipes here. This thing cooks, baby. Down the center line. Nice flying airplane. Really dig this thing. All right, Key Steve, coming by fast again. All right, let's drop some flaps. Let's give a slow flight pass down the center line here. Got a little bit of a right crosswind here. Power's coming in. He's dragging it in slow with the flaps. It'll get down to a crawl nicely. I'm going to turn here where the tailwind's going to hit me a little bit. I'm going to keep it slow, keep it slow. Now we're turning into the headwind, so it should give me a little extra lift coming in here. Nice and slow. You don't need as much. I'm at about a, I'm about a third throttle here. There we go. Ease that power in. Stay on that rudder. Flaps up. Folks, Rich here at RC Informer. Today I have yet another really sweet airplane coming from Horizon Hobby in their E-Flight uh, lineup of airplanes. This is their 1.5 meter P51D Mustang in the uh, Lou IV uh, paint scheme. Really nice model, retractable gear, flaps, six cell power, no gluing required to get this thing together. And on top of all that, um, not only does it have an AS3X, but this is one of the first that I'm actually going to show you guys in the smart technology lineup, meaning mostly that it has a smart technology ESC. So the beauty of that is it can talk to your radio. So we'll be getting telemetry running through that, and we're going to show you this uh, in the video. Now, this is going to be an unbox, but it may turn into an assembly, too, because this is such a simple airplane uh, to assemble. Um, and if you guys are interested in one of these, I am going to put the links below in the description and then probably in the comments as well. If you guys do decide to get one of these, uh, if you use our links, click on our links, put it in your cart and buy it. Uh, you support our channel because we do get a little bit of a commission and we do appreciate you guys supporting our channel. Um, also, in the upper right hand corner, the little white eye up there, if you click on that even right now, you'll get a drop down window right here and it'll show you some of the other videos in the series, uh, which may not be up just yet because um, I, I may not have filled the, filmed the flight demo of this thing yet and uh, that'll be up there once we get that. But I'll put some A10 videos and some other of uh, the uh, Horizon and E-Flight uh, models in here for you guys to check out. And at the end, um, you can also click on the end of the video, there'll be some uh, links to other videos. But check out RC Informer, folks, um, and look at our other videos. We've got tons of other free stuff for you guys to check out. Uh, it's all free, and we do appreciate you guys watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing to the RC Informer YouTube channel and hitting that bell. We do appreciate you guys uh, supporting us. So anyway this is one sweet mustang and we are going to go through the specs of this thing um, we'll go ahead and we'll pull this up and we'll take a look at it. So we're going to go right to the specs section so everybody can see this and this is my first time flying one of these and get one of these out of the box so um, we're going to uh, kind of show you everything you need to know about this thing uh, you can see right here this is the bind and fly i don't know if there's a plug and play but experience level of two so some experience levels required and there's your uh your part number for this particular one, but I wrote it in here, your motor's a 460 kV, so this thing is gonna really haul the mail. Uh, it's gonna have lots of speed, lots of power, and lots of duration flying it. That's already installed, and here's what we got new in this thing. 
Uh, we've got a Spectrum Avion Smart 100 Amp ESC. So it's a smart one. Again, it's going to link up to our telemetry, and we'll be able to get that right on our radio as long as we have, you know, our Spectrum uh, radio. And I think it's a, uh, I think it's DSM2 or DSM-X. I think I, I don't know exactly which version you have to have, but uh, mine's an X, and it will take that so it'll give you all the telemetry nine uh, mini and micro servos pre-installed receiver is a spectrum ar 637t has as3x and safe technologies which i'll set up and show you guys that working uh, even though i don't need it it's a nice feature to have set up uh, and then uh, uh, required transmitter is a six to seven channel it shows six is really all you need uh, to get this thing going and it has to be dsmx or DSM-2 compatible, and that's uh, the requirement. Batteries, you can go anywhere from a 6-cell 2200, 3200, all the way up to a 7000. Really, this plane's big enough, so you know whatever is going to fit is going to work. It's an IC5 or EC5 connector, and that's a requirement as well. And then charger, obviously a 6-cell compatible uh, charger as well. So uh, anyway, let's flip around a little bit. We'll look at a couple pictures on the box. Really sweet. And uh, they go into some of the detail here on what this thing uh, really has. Again, Spectrum uh, DSMX uh, um, technology. Uh, it also has the optional safe system, AS3X, of course, so we have uh, just really great flight stability. Um, we talked about the motor. It's a 460 kV, 100 amp Avi Avion, Avion, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, 100 amp Avion, uh, smart ESC. So we're going to be showing you that smart technology for the first time here. Um, and functional electric retracts, really nice on this thing with shock, shock absorbing struts and uh, factory installed servos, ball linkages. I think they're already installed for the majority of them, I think. We'll take a look when we get in there. Lots of extra features and easy assembly. No glue, baby. This this thing is totally, totally glueless. So let's get this uh, box aside and we'll see how it looks uh, right here in the package. I got the box kind of at the bottom because there's a two layer. They're double decorating all this. And one thing I want to note, I noticed when this thing first, when I pulled this out of the box, is there's an extra set of gear doors. Future models will already have these installed. There is a set installed already on there, but apparently there were some issues with the material. And if you have a door break on some of these intermediate production models, they give you the extra set of the upgraded doors to put on if they should happen to break. So I'll keep these in reserve um, in the event that I have a door breakage uh, and uh, they have these newly designed doors that are supposed to be way more durable, a, a different material apparently. And uh, we'll just kind of put those aside for the future. But uh, the newer models are actually going to have this on it already. I think earlier models, um, you had to call in and they would send you a set or something. So if you guys have breaking gear doors on your early version, just contact them. I think they'll send you another set. Um, and then and this one gives you both. Future models, you're only going to have uh, the new ones are going to be installed. So anyway, let's uh, get this thing uh, split up here. There is kind of a an L or a wing hold down on the other side of this box, so this thing's not going to lay out quite so flat. But you can see here how nice uh, everything looks. Look at this center wing center center wing section. Uh, you've got your uh, wing uh, tip panels there. You've got your horizontal stabilizer, fuselage. Everything's all in here. Nicely double deckered, nicely double uh, double uh, deckered packaging. And uh, with that, let's get all these things out of here, and we'll take a look at everything. You see your nice uh, uh, wing panel tip, wing tip with the aileron, all ready to be plugged in. We'll go ahead and we'll reach up here. I already cut the tape on these babies so I can get in here and pull these things. They've got padding um, everywhere where it's really where it's needed. So let's uh, pull this thing out of here. Nice magnum, really tough wing panel section. And we'll get into the center section and we'll get into detail on this. This is really nice the way this is designed because you can leave your center section of your wing on the airplane, transport it, and then just you put your wing tips on when you get to the field. Really nice. They just kind of pop on and off. Horizontal stabilizer looking like real nice quality. Just coming out of the box. Looks like we got some drop tanks here. Let's pull these out. Looks like they've got the simulated fuel lines and everything on there. Looks super, super nice. Let's get our spinner out of here. Let's see. We'll get our uh, prop blades out. Looks like we got antennas and a few screws to get this thing together. Looks like about 10 or 12 or 14 screws or so. And uh, let's get the fuselage. Actually, let me pull the uh, instruction manual. Super nice. Very thick instruction manual for this thing. And then let's get the uh, get the fuselage on out of here. We'll lift up the box and we'll put this baby down. Nice size model, man. This is going to be great on 6S for sure. Again, padding where it's needed. 
where there isn't any padding needed, they don't put it. So it's kind of nice, uh, really uh, kind of nice that they have this set up. So let me go ahead and lay out all the parts and we'll take a closer look at everything in detail. Now that we got all the parts uh, laid out that uh, came out of the box, you can see that this is going to be a super simple assembly. Uh, I took a look at everything, I went into the manual, and I am really impressed with the uh, just the quality, fit and finish, the, uh, the, the uh, lack of work that we actually have to do to get this thing together. It's just one impressive uh, model. Now starting here at the bottom, we got the fuselage with your motor installed, speed controllers installed, tail wheels installed. All your uh, elevator and rudder uh, servos are installed in there. All the plugins are ready to go. So, uh, just really nice. All painted decals applied. This is just so nice. It's just fastest out of the box, folks. Without a doubt, this is going to be uh, one of the fastest out of the box airplanes uh, I, I, I've kind of seen lately. All these E Flight airplanes are, are like this, and it's just real impressive. Uh, you got your main center wing section here that's intended to be bolted to the fuselage. There's no wires, so you just plug it all in. You can see your connectors right there, and we'll look at that in closer detail. Uh, and I think it's four screws, get your wing on and you're done. Center section's intended to be left on, you can take it off, but really what's intended are the two outer panels. Those are intended to be just plugged in and removed uh, when going to and from the field. But that center section's got your retacks installed, flap servos, um, all that stuff is just plugged in, wired, and it's just ready to go. Your two uh, outboard wing panels, uh, those plug in, you got your little servo connector right there for your aileron and your wingtip light, and those will plug right in. Your spars already attached already it's already set in there you just slide that into the receiver tube and you're, you're good to go so you've got your two drop tanks here those are optional fly with them fly without them they slide on and off you got your four prop blades that have quite a nice bit of pitch and your uh, spinner here got a parts bag with screws and the instruction manual that's it guys this thing is super awesome I am dying to get this out there and it's gonna be really fast to get it out there so uh, with that let's uh, take a look at all of this stuff starting with the uh, fuselage lots of impressive details uh, to show you guys here uh, real impressive. In fact, one of the things that drew my attention right away was this scoop. It's a nice plastic louver. Let's air get in there. You can kind of see your speed controller in there. Uh, starting here at the front, uh, you've got your uh, Spectrum 460 kV brushless outrunner. Got your beautiful, beautiful hex drive on there that connects uh, uh, to your uh, your prop uh, and spinner, a spinner and prop, and gives it a real nice positive lock. You can see here, folks, lots of cooling opening here going in there. And uh, I think there's some cooling holes out in the back. There's also the scoop that lets, uh, I think that'll let a bunch of air in. I'm trying to get a good angle on that. Yep, it's ventilated, air will get in there. And then as the air goes in through the front, goes in through the scoop, it'll come out the back via this hole and this hole where the radiator cooling door usually is. So there's a lot of exhaust air on this thing as well. But uh, look at the fit and finish of this. There's rivets on it. It's nice and smooth. You can hardly even tell that this is foam. They did a nice job on the uh, engine exhaust pipes. This little scoop, they already glued on. I think the instruction manual even shows you got to put that on, but they, they did that already. Beautiful finish. Look at that thing. Look at the rivets all the way around it. Nice uh, sticker application. I keep saying decals, but it's actually stickers all the way around on this thing. And then, uh, you know, as we get to the underside, you can see right there, there's your metal threaded holes. There's two up front two in the back, and uh, there's a ferrite uh, magnets, basically, uh, that cut out uh, some of the RF signal. I'll show you that when we get on the inside. But you can see there's your four wing screws that go in, and then right back in here, you can see your connections here. That's for your landing gear. Uh, that's for your uh, flaps, lights, and uh, ailerons, all that stuff. So you just put your wing in uh, with your servo connectors. In fact, I'll zoom in. Let me go ahead and zoom in on that so you guys can really see that. That's where they all plug right into. So. No wiring to do, folks. You just plug your wing in and all the connections are made. Pretty darn sweet overall. You got your uh, fillet there. Again, you can see some of the rivet detail all the way around. Again, exhaust holes, decals all the way around. Just super, super nice. And this is what's impressing the heck out of me. This is the rudder servo. It's already installed. There's the hatch cover to get in there, ball link, all that's done. Submerged style hinge on your rudder. I think the rest of this thing has traditional style foam hinges that are laminated, but beautiful rotation around this thing. You can see how nice that moves. Servo's nice and smooth, lots of rivet detail, 
rudder trim tab, simulated trim tab, I should say. And then uh, just real nice uh, tail wheel all the way around. Super, super nice retract mechanism. Separate steering servo down in there for it. And then this is a hatch cover that you can open with these two screws if you need to access that servo so they're not hiding it from you they're hiding it from you but they're letting you get into it too as well so um and i think your one of your rudder sc servo screws is going to go through that hole but you can see this nice magnet holding your uh, gear doors open when the gear goes in it'll grab that uh or i should say spring there's a spring there once the 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 nose or tail retract goes into the well it'll grab that spring it'll pull it pull the doors closed and then that spring keeps it out just by extending which is pretty sweet how it actually does that really really nice and then two more screws i think there's actually three one two three we'll look in the instruction manual that go up to put your elevator on i'm sorry not your rudder but your horizontal stabilizer goes on there and those screws you can see go through those kind of two holes right there but really sweet all the way around let me flip this around one thing you'll notice different from one side to the other too notice it's nice and straight right here but on the other side there's sort of a little bit of a plug slot right there and what that's for is that's for on your elevator we'll flip it over the elevator the whole thing passes through on this side it doesn't go through the other it only goes in one way and that's what that is for it's sort of an alignment plug to make sure that that thing goes in there straight so look at the detail on that thing look at the rivets and the panel lines and there's minimum vacuum holes on this thing too these little these little uh, uh, six or eight or seven or little 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 pin things here. These are where the uh, the vacuum vacuums the foam into the mold. And then really nice hatch cover and servo. Once again, this one goes back to your elevator, and that's really really nice. So moving along again, look at the detail panel lines, rivets, nice sticker application, really contrasty paint job. I think I'm really digging the silver blue and yellow. That is, this thing is going to stand out big time uh, in the sky and against and against a, a tree backdrop as well so really cool and then they've got this really nice latch mechanism in fact actually let me show you the canopy first you can see in there you got uh let's see we got some instruments in there we got a pilot pretty standard looking pilot he's been used in a lot of airplanes in the past so he gets to fly some cool stuff and then we got this latch mechanism that uh, you pull back and you can lift this up one thing i noticed that latch pin is a little bit long that's one thing I'm not totally blown away about because if you push down on this, you might actually break that thing. You want to make sure probably that you pull this latch back, let that thing settle, and then, then make sure that it does, uh, it does close so you don't break it and make sure it comes all the way forward. In fact, for me right now, it doesn't look like it is. So let's see if I can get it. There we go. Got it to latch in. So again, don't just push down on that canopy. Uh, make sure you pull the latch back before you put the canopy down so you don't break that pin. So they did ventilate this thing really nice, little hole in there that helps uh, minimize the uh, potential for uh, bubbling up. Plus, there's a hole. See that ventilation hole there in the under in the top of the canopy? Again, that's to let some hot air out so we don't uh, blister that thing uh, too badly. So let me put that canopy back there. And then here we go, folks. It's a first, first for me anyway. Uh, we've got smart technology installed, and you can tell that by the IC5 connector, folks, with the uh, your center uh, data line right here that you can see uh, running through the gray, which it's sticking to this thing and not letting me look at it. But uh, there's your uh, data line that's uh, on there, and that runs all the way down in. And here's your uh, battery tray. You put your battery on there, slide that in place. And a little courtesy of FMS there. FMS uh, had designed that for the Horizon guys, uh, or using it on the Horizon models anyway. And uh, all the way down in there, and I'm gonna see if I can. I'm gonna see if I can zoom down so we all can take a look at down in there. But there is our Avion, right down there. ESC. That's our smart ESC. And the beauty is it's secured in place. You can also see ahead. Uh, you can see through the fuselage into the center section where all that cooling is around the motor. All that cooling is coming in from that front lower scoop, and it's going past. Our, um, our ESC there. So it's keeping everything nice and cool. So anyway, um, once again, we've got uh, this big box wrapped around the power cord right here. Uh, and uh, this one here, these are just ferrite uh, magnets, I think. Uh, those just kind of cut down on the RF uh, signal uh, per, to, per, to kind of eliminate uh, any kind of signal loss or reduce this chance of signal loss or anything. And uh, that's about it. So I'll go ahead and I'll push 
this battery floor. Once you get your battery on here, and you can use Velcro on this. I'm probably going to put my shelf liner on this baby uh, just to kind of secure the battery in place. And I, I may even show that here uh, in this, uh, this video. So let's see if this thing's going to stop me now from getting this thing uh, in place. Yep, these, uh, these uh, battery straps kind of catch on that thing. So let me see if I can pull this out. That can be a little cumbersome. Yeah, I see what happened. You got to be careful with that, uh, that ferrite uh, thing, that box right here. This thing can kind of get in the way with your straps. I'm just going to push it down in there a little bit. All right, now they got the battery floor in place, we'll slide it back. And you do want to make sure that this thing snaps into place. If it doesn't snap into place, um, you could have your battery slide back. And if your battery slides back, your CD shifts back. And uh, that's bad, that is a bad way to fly. So again, make sure when you get your battery in place, you snap that back and lock it into position. So uh, now moving back here, we've got our uh, fancy uh, telemetry receiver. This is uh, the T model. And uh, a couple things to note, there is a bind plug port right here that they put off of there so you don't have to reach down in there and mess with the receiver. The receiver has this, um, this uh, kind of silicon white glue that holds it into place. They don't want, really want that to move. That's intended so it's fixed to the airplane and uh, it gives you the stabilization you need when you need it. Um, so they created a bind plug for you here so you can put, uh, or a little extension, to put your bind plug in there to bind. Or this little uh, spectrum symbol right here is actually a bind button and we'll show you that um, inside the um, in the instruction manual. So this right here, if you push hard on that, push on that, not too hard, it makes a little click noise. That's actually a bind button. So you don't really even need uh, the bind plug to bind anymore. So um, the antennas, one is hooked up here uh, all the way down there. It looks like it's on the upper side. It looks like it runs front to back. This one right here, uh, it's running kind of up and down. It's running over this hump. I will probably remove that and just put it somewhere flat. I might put it right there. It just you want this part of the antenna, this part right here. You want this unsheathed silver area from here to here, like the last inch, inch and a half. You want that to be straight. So I'll secure it somewhere, and we'll show you that here later as we uh, go along. But once again, big magnet here to help uh, out with the uh, with potentially any loss of signal. But uh, but that is it, folks. That is the inside of this thing. Everything's connected, ready to go. It's ready to be bound right up to your uh, to, to your radio. Receiver's, uh, once again, already in it, that telemetry receiver. Thoroughly impressed with this thing, folks. Let me, uh, let me see if I can get this thing latched in place. Again, pull back on the latch, push this down, make sure your latch goes in and grabs it so we don't break that pin because it is a little bit uh, kind of elongated there. We don't want to don't want to ding that up. So we'll talk more about that as we get to flying this thing, but really nice, super, super impressed. So let's get this, this full wing panel off of here and let's see, see how this baby looks. Look at the size of this. Look at the size of this darn thing. This is huge. You can see lots of detail all the way around, but look, notice no wires, Ma. Look at that. No wires at all. I mean, you can see a couple here, right here, whatever. These are for the, the looks like the retract doors, and there's hatches so you can get in there. But they've got everything closed up. This is just uh, set in here, probably with some contact cement, so you could probably peel that away if you need to get in there to do maintenance. But for the most part, uh, here's all your connections, folks. Those plug in right to the underside of the fuselage. Once you just slide the wing right in at an angle, put your four screws in, and that's it, folks. All your connections are made for your landing gear, flaps, ailerons, lights. It's all right there. And those little white pins are just alignment pins to make sure that it all kind of lines up. And, uh, and then you've got your four screw holes. You've got uh, two right here, which... Uh, are backed up with these uh, doublers, and then there's some doublers right here. Uh, but that's your four wing screws, two and two there. Doors and everything, those will open up. We'll retract those here shortly. I'll show them to you. Oh, I hear they actually they're opening up. Look at that. There's your uh, your uh, your uh, your wheel and everything. There is a uh, looks like an E ring right there. And uh, what you want to make sure you do, just like I always talk about a little bit with these things, all the time in my videos, guys. I'm going to mention it. Foam tack, baby. 
just a little dab of foam tech without getting it on the bearing, just right there, to help keep the E-ring in place. It's just a little extra security. And uh, you can actually, if you need to change the wheel, just peel it off. It's just rubber cement. And then you can uh, take your uh, uh, wheel off and put you back on and then you can put your e-ring back on but it really kind of helps you losing from, from losing those e-rings so really nice gear door look how slick that is and as we move around the wing you can see there's spars jigged in here that's what these little holes are jig slots and same thing here there's jig slots all the way along here so there's this whole thing is fully jigged um, but real nice and then of course we talked about the door uh, this door should hold up but if it does break that's why they gave you the uh, the extra doors that we uh, we talked about there in the bag in fact I'll pull those out one more time um, if you don't have these in yours you either have an older one or a really new one and if you have gear door problems if it's breaking or something just let Horizon know. This is just one of the later production ones where they're including the doors with it. And then future productions will already have the proper doors installed so you shouldn't have any problems with them. So here's your hard point slots for your drop tanks. Those babies slide right in. Let me see if I can actually get one out for you. There is a dihedral to this, so they are side specific. So it is kind of kind of critical that you get that right on there. Um, and I think I got the correct one here. Let's go ahead and put this on in place. We'll kind of snap that in and we'll slide it back. And that is it, folks. Drop tank is in position. Really super scale detail. Again, simulated fuel lines there. That is pretty darn cool. I really like, uh, I really like how they did that. That's very, very nice. And then on your wing tip here, folks, um, this is where your wing slides in. You've got your spar tube, receiver tube ready to go to plug that thing in. Uh, you've got uh, your alignment pins. These these are two locking mechanisms. You've got your connection that's made here. And then uh, I guess that's another alignment area. I don't think there's any screws for this, folks. You just snap this in, fly. When you're done, you unsnap. And actually, we'll pop one of those on there so you guys can see that. In fact, I'll take the drop tank off for right now. It's really that simple to take these on and off. You see, they even have them labeled left and right. So very, very cool. It is kind of idiot proof. Really nice all the way around. We'll look at the other side. Fit and finish is spectacular. Let's look at the top. The top's real nice. Nice gun detail all the way around. Very, very slick. I really like how this is. So with that, let's grab, uh, let's grab one of these wing tips right here, and we'll take a look and see how, that, uh, how that's going to go on. Um, there's your wing tip with your locking mechanisms. Your spar's already installed. I'm pretty sure that's glued in place. Uh, there's your connector right in the middle, and your two locking tabs. Uh, right here, those are your locking mechanisms, and then that's an alignment, another alignment pin there. Uh, probably an, more or less an anti-rotation type pin, so all the load isn't on the connectors. But look at the detail. Look at the rivet on there. Rod horn linkages, ball links already installed. Look how nice that is. Servo box uh, that you can unscrew and get out of there. And uh, horn is already installed and everything. Really nice. And then, of course, your wing tip light. They did a really cool job on the wingtip lights on those. Those should be pretty cool. They frosted them too. That uh, frost, uh, frostedness there on there, or that frosty covering on the inside or outside, I think it's on the inside, that actually diffuses the light. So it actually glows kind of brighter or bigger even. So instead of it being a piercing light, it's sort of one that is uh, sort of bigger and bolder. So now here's how the connection is made. You can see how simple this uh, thing is. There's just a spar, again, these two latch mechanisms, and then towards the back there is that alignment pin. You literally just put this thing on. Now I'm not gonna snap them in here because um, you really need kind of two hands on it, and I got one on each side, and it's really not enough force, because it takes some force to just kind of snap this uh, uh, in. You just squeeze them together and they snap in, and then when you take them off, you, you pull them apart. Now I'll show this probably uh, maybe when we assemble it here, uh, uh, of course, and then uh, in the flight demo we'll talk about that too. I tried to do this once on another plane and it took some force to snap it on and snap it off. A friend of mine had one of these and I didn't want to mess with it because I didn't want to break his plane but essentially that's all it is. You just pop this thing into place, your connection is made and you're good to go. And then when you want to leave the field for uh, transport purposes you just pull it apart and it unsnaps and comes out. So anyway we'll save that for a little later on here and I'll show you that here shortly and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit uh, at, the, uh, at the flying field as well. 
And then here's the uh, here's the horizontal stabilizer. This thing is this thing is super nice. Look at the look at the finish on this. There's a, a few little teeny tiny voids, but for the most part, the finish is just awesome all the way around. Nice and smooth. You can see your doublers here. In fact, I think this one is this one I believe is threaded. I think there's a metal thread in there because there's three screws that come up to secure this into place. That one goes into threads. These two come through this plastic piece with that little this little alignment cam, if you want to call it. And uh, those go through plastic and up into uh, the back here where there are metal threads. So that, that secures all nicely. Look at the detail there. You got rivet detailing all the way around. Um, we do have, um, just like, and I didn't even show you on the ailerons, but the ailerons there um, are um, foam type hinges like this one. Um, it looks like it's cracking, but it's not. In fact, um, uh, it, there's a laminate that they run along there that makes this really, really tough and you want to exercise it. There is a huge torque rod. You can see it running all the way through to keep both of these lined up and they're pretty secure. You try and bend them, you can't really. They're not, it's nice and tough. They did a good job securing it because they use some plastic doublers for both of these. This one doubles uh, obviously as the ball length for the tail. So the tail rod uh, is going to be in the package. But you can see here, you've got your jig slots for your tail spar. So there's a nice tail spar running through. It's pretty darn rigid and uh, just uh, super, super nice. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up this fuselage um, and let me see if I can show you. I don't know how easy this is to install. It should be pretty simple. Um, this should slide right in via this cam mechanism. Let's slide this in and see how this uh, how this goes into position. And oh, voila, look at that. Look how beautiful of a fit, really nice fit and finish that is. It goes right on and that is it, folks. Once you get your tail on, you line it up, you run your three screws, one through here, one through here, and then one right in here that you can see those three screws. And that's it, it's in position. You just uh, put your rod on. So you've got your uh, elevator uh, horn right here. You run your rod back there, which I think it's in the bag. And that's it, folks. Pretty slick. Very, very, very slick design. I like the way that is. It's very simple, very user-friendly, and very, very, very fast. You can get this thing up and rolling out to the field quickly. So let's take a look at this spinner real quick. I am impressed with this. Here's the thing to note. Here's where this thing's going to get its speed and power out of it. Look at all the pitch in that thing, especially at the root. There is a ton ton of pitch in this thing. You can see how steep that is at the root. Um, and that is where this thing is going to get its power from. You simply just put these things on. You put uh, two screws per each one. And I believe there's uh, blind nuts in the back. And that is your four bladed prop. And you can see how steep that is some serious pitch. And again, that is probably where this thing is going to get a whole bunch of its power from is having a nice uh, steep pitch propeller, nice uh, bright yellow spinner. It's pretty durable all the way around, nice and tough. As you can see, it's all made out of plastic, nice plastic mold and fitting, uh, just super awesome. And then uh, let's take a look at the parts bag. Parts bag's pretty simple here. Um, um, there is one antenna. This antenna slot, this blue one, it's gonna fit right in the back. You don't have to put it on. If you do, uh, I recommend using foam tack because it does stay flexible and it'll keep it in place. But as you know, guys, there's two kinds of antennas, those that have broken off and those that will. So if you don't want it on there, don't put it on there. Uh, but for scale detail, it looks uh, really nice. And then here's all your uh, spinner screws with the blind nuts. And here's all your big screws to assemble the airplane for your uh, three for your tail, four for your wing. So I think that's uh, they gave you eight. So I think, what is that, three for the tail, four for the seven. So they probably gave you a spare some, but uh, seven screws gets this whole thing together, really, folks. Uh, there's eight screws for the, for the prop, and then here's your, uh, here's your push rod for your elevator, and that's it, folks. That's how quick this thing is uh, going to be to get together. Now, I made a couple notes for you guys in the instruction manual, because this is my uh, 30 flight airplane um, uh, using the AS3X and uh, smart technology. And uh, there's a lot of commonalities uh, and things that I discover every time I get one of these things and, and show you. Uh, and there's a lot of good information that I decided to highlight and pinpoint so you guys can go right to it if you're not sure where something is. They do start off here, uh, actually at the bottom here, the dimensions, uh, 1.5 meters or 59 inch on the wingspan, 52 inch long or 1.3 in length. So it's a good size airplane. And then they really quickly, right up front here, uh, talk about, this is a quick start information. They go right into uh, going into your transmitter setup, selecting model, wing type, uh, one aileron, one flap. 
The flaps are Y harnessed, so that's why they let you know that is, is that there really technically is only one flap, one channel, one flap channel, uh, and, and that kind of makes it simplified. Uh, most airplanes nowadays are like that. So, um, uh, no servo reversing, it looks like. Uh, travel adjustment, 100% uh, uh, on everything. And then they go into your rates. They go aileron, elevator, rudder. So, they talk about the travel, high and low rates, flap travel for uh, takeoff and landing, uh, and the elevator uh, trim neutral setting. They got the flap values here, and that is for um, your elevator to flap mixing. And uh, they go into Expo. I may not use any because I usually don't. And then um, center gravity, 124 to 137. So, and we'll, we'll show you the picture of that as we go along. Um, uh, flight timer setting, that's just a recommended thing. Um, if you're using a 7,000 pack, you're probably going to fly a lot longer than that, especially if you're modulating the throttle a bit. And uh, But here's your parts. We talked about all of this. Uh, this is just sort of a review. And then as we get into all of this stuff, uh, I'm not going to go into everything, but I did highlight a few things. So they talk about, they show right here at the top, computerized transmitter setup. I selected DX9 because that's what I'm using. And they go into all of this stuff. Uh, they, they generally, in most of uh, the e-flight planes, high rates 100, low 70%. Uh, 70 uh, so there's only two rates you use when you're using the AS3X system. And uh, the throttle cut or sort of set servo travel to 100%, which it already will be by default. Uh, throttle cut at uh, minus 100, so you set up your throttle cut. This is for DX7 and 8. This is for all the others. I highlighted DX9, and they talk about, once again, kind of like uh, similar to right kind of back here. They sort of reiterate or kind of go over it all again, but uh, or, or a little redundant with it. But transmitter setup, airplane, one aileron on flag, function list, go to function list. And then this talks about setting up your switch on D. This is exactly how I've always set mine up before I ever did any of these E-Flight planes, pretty much. But they give you the the zero flap position, the, the, the takeoff flap position plus 20 and, uh, and uh, minus 50, but, and, then, uh, and then of course uh, with full flaps. And then speed of two, I usually use two or three, but two is my preferred. And then once you do that, you do want to check and make sure that your travel fairly matches these. It doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, those should coincide with that. So we get to the assembly. We talked about sliding the elevator on and three screws. You can see how simple this thing is gonna be to get together. We'll go to the next page. You kind of shoehorn in your wing so all your connections are made and there's your four screws just like we talked about. Then your wing tip pops into place. It's going to be a little hard at first to snap that in, uh, but it'll get better as uh, you go along. Uh, they go into clevises. I don't think there's any clevises on this airplane. So this is probably just old data when they created this thing. Everything is a ball link on this airplane. They go into the pitot tube. That's already installed on the wing. It's on that one. You see it right there. So they already put that on for you. Antenna is optional if you want the radio antenna. And then this little scoop right here, that also is already on the airplane. So some things, pre-production, they, they, they think that they're going to have you do, but then they just decide to do it anyway for ease. Uh, there's your prop, guys. Eight screws, uh, prop and spinner, and it goes into place. It's that simple. They do also talk about arm positions. Just want to verify they put them in the right place at the factory, that they didn't have the, the B team on the assembly line putting them in the wrong place. So you could check and make sure everything's in the right place. You do want to keep checking everything. Uh, that they talk about your drop tank slot. Again, those are optional. First flight, I am going to put them on there. Just don't want the extra drag, but there's very little drag. It's not going to be a big deal. Uh, and then they uh, they go into a little receiver information. Let's see what else I have here. Um, they do talk about the battery tray. We discussed locking that in place. You can optionally put on Velcro uh, if you want to. Again, I'm going to use shelf liner on mine, I noted, so I wouldn't forget. And that's pretty good. And then binding's going to be a little different on this because we have a bind button. So we don't really have to have uh, there's different ways to bind it. There's using a bind button and there's using a bind plug. And then there's with safe enabled and, sa and, and uh, with, uh, safe select enabled and safe select enabled. And then this is with these two are with them with di disabled, whether you use the button or the plug. So that's all your instructions. It's really just that simple to uh, do all this. I am probably going to do the button. And then assigning a switch to safe select. If you don't want safe select, uh, you know, just bind it the, the, the non-safe uh, select way, which is down there. But I'm going to assign it because it's, it's better to have it working than not. Uh, even if you don't use it, um, then you can flip it on and off when you want. Most of the time, this, once you do this, you run through this uh, five movements up and down with the sticks uh, uh, moved together into the lower corner to assign your stick position. The up position on the switch, whether you use a two or three position, the up position is usually safe select on and down is usually 
off. And then this is about viewing your smart telemetry and how you, you view it on the uh, transmitter. So I'll get into that in this video, I think, here. We'll talk about that when we get it together. And uh, I haven't actually done that yet, but it'll, it'll show you all that on the uh, transmitter display. Of course, you want to make sure your flight controls are going the correct direction. Don't just plug it in and go fly. Make sure everything's working the right way. And every time you go fly, you want to check that as well. Um, this talks about uh, AS3X directional control. They talk about this is uh, just how to pre-flight make sure you do it. Safe select and the flight stabilization does not come on until you raise the throttle above 25%. And it stays on the stabilization until uh, you unplug the battery. So it'll, it'll all be working there. And then um, uh, there's your CG. Again, we'll talk about that when we fly the plane. Uh, and that's measured from where the leading edge uh, of the wing meets the fuselage. And then this is about flight trimming. All the AS3Xs are kind of like this. Once you trim the thing neutral, Fly it in a straight line basically for three seconds. I guess it memorizes it or something, and then you know it'll remember. They just, but it needs three seconds to, to, to kind of lock into what you just trimmed. So, um, anyway, and that goes into all that. So, let's see what else there is. And I think that's about it, folks. This thing is pretty uh, darn sweet. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, slap this together. We'll get it bound up and uh, we'll get it ready to go flying. Okay, getting this thing together is pretty darn simple. There's two things I omitted uh, or that I said incorrectly that I wanted to kind of clarify on is that your flaps on this airplane are a submerged style. They have this really nice recessed area. They're uh, just kind of flat hinged on the other side, but you can see how nicely they recess into that area. It is a foam hinge, but it is laminated. And then the ailerons on this airplane are um, fully submerged style. You can see how nice they are there. They rotate around the center point just beautifully. Uh, they're all sealed up and everything. So just an awesome, awesome hinge set for this. Initially, I had said that they were all foam, but they're not. In fact, they're all submerged style like this, with the exception, like we talked about, is the elevator. These are uh, these are foam hinges around uh, around the center, and then the foam hinges are on the flaps on the bottom side, but they do recess. So really super nice uh, hinges all the way around. Now to get this thing together, uh, I have, uh, I'm, I'm getting some assistance here from the uh, Cruisin airplane flight deck stand. You guys can check these out at cruisin.com. John Zinn is American, he makes these things. These are made in the USA, baby. So if you wanna get these, I'll put a link below where you can get to it, or just check them out at cruisin.com. And uh, they are made in the USA. <laughs> so if you guys wanna buy American, Check those out. Really nice airplane stand all the way around to get our American-made Mustang together. So uh, anyway, well, it's made in China, but you know, anyway, it's American-made Mustang, American-made plane. Let's get this thing together. All right, just like we talked about, first step really up here, uh, you really almost hardly need the instructions for this. I just reviewed them and they're pretty simple. But you see the elevator goes right in. That's the only way it goes in. You've got uh, a couple screws to get these on with. There, there's only two size screws for this. There's these, uh, there's three millimeter metrics is what they are, but they're 40 millimeters long. All you need is a two millimeter metric driver. That's it. So now that this is in place, I'm just going to drop these uh, three screws down in here. Let's see if I can get those to go in. This is my first time getting it all together. And uh, let's see if we can get that down in place. These things should bite pretty good. I want to show you guys this thing, hopefully, sort of in real time and how this goes together. And we'll see if those are biting. I should start to feel those bite here pretty soon. Let's get this one down in here. That one is definitely biting. It's going down in there. That's pretty sweet. Let's get this one in place. That one's dropping all the way in. Actually, this one may not have dropped in there. Let's see, yeah, there we go. You kind of pop them down in there and then they should bite. They should bite their threads. You should feel them getting tight. You don't want to go too tight because it is foam. I can feel it getting tight there now. Again, three screws, folks. Lock that thing into position. I'll pull this out and I'll show you what that looks like. That's basically it, folks. You can see right there uh, that one down on the wheel well and the other two, they're all the way down in there. But that's it. Three screws secure that thing into place. And then um, you have your uh, push rod here that's going to go on your elevator. It's uh, pretty simple. We'll see if I can uh, flip through the manual real quick and look and see where that thing actually, which slot it actually uh, went on. I think it was supposed to go, let's see, the uh, elevator goes into the almost the inner hole, but one out from the inner hole. So we'll put this on in that position. I'll uh, see if I can get this locked in there. There it is. And then we'll pop that in place. We're going to trim this all up later. We'll snap that into position, see if I can get it on there. And that's it, folks.
you can see right there push rods in place it's really just uh, kind of that simple and if I make some changes to it I'll talk about uh, that with you guys uh, during the flight demo so and then the wing the wing panel folks we'll get this thing in place let's see how easy this goes on it's my first time plugging this baby in so let's see how it goes just like the instructions say we'll go ahead and drop this in see if we can get those to plug in and we'll see how it goes in I'm kind of fiddling with it trying to make sure it uh, it's locking in with a little bit of jockeying we'll see if those alignment pins will get into place there it looks like it uh, it doesn't really want to go in let's see I regret to inform you guys that the uh, the wing did not go on as smoothly as I would have liked um, and I realized why and I'll pass that on to you how, uh, how what can possibly happen now hopefully your wing will go right on it won't be an issue but I noticed that as I was trying to get the wing on and I messed with it for about a half an hour as you can see there's a little uh, little point right here where the pin was trying to go in here 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 and here and what was going on is the, the these were fine up on the top these ones but these down here you can see the pin was not quite kind of lining up uh, with with the uh, with the slot here so uh, I'll show you a picture up here of uh, what I did I just went into the opposite side where the pins were and I could tell that some of the pins were off center the ones that actually lined up with uh, with these holes right here like these five or six holes on this side and I just kind of bent them over a little so they would fit and now they fit in uh, just perfectly so uh, hopefully that's something you guys can avoid uh, when you're putting yours on also um, and you'll see how uh, how easily this now goes in so if it's not going in right away you probably got a pin alignment problem and you just got to look at those and make sure they'll fit but you can see how easy now mine goes in and hopefully yours will go in just as easy the first time and you won't have to mess with it kind of like I did now one other thing to note as well is you guys can scratch this up right here if you're not careful I had a couple scratches on mine simply because you see my gear doors closed these Z bends point out here so if you grab your gear doors and you start pulling up on those you see your Z bends are out of the way so it's a really good idea to open your gear doors okay before you put your wings on so you get that Z bend both of those Z bends out of the way and I'll show you right here how nice it is you can get it on without scratching it on and it'll fit right into place so don't get too frustrated if it doesn't fit right off the bat um, it's just a little bit of a pin alignment problem and now now it's in there nice and uh, smoothly I'll go ahead and close those doors and we can now finally get the screws in place so boy what a headache that was it took about a half hour or so for me to fool with it and hopefully like I said folks you guys probably hopefully will not uh, have that uh, that problem I'm gonna go ahead and angle my viewer down here so I can see what it is that I'm doing now you just take your uh, 40 millimeter screws right here your three millimeter metric with the two inch driver that are 40 millimeters long and you're going to kind of push them down in there make sure they go down into place it looks like they're fitting down in there and then we'll go ahead and spin these uh, till they get tight on us we'll go ahead and get that in place yeah they're tightening up real nicely now so um, anyway hopefully that'll avoid you guys any issues with those but it, it fit in nicely once I once I looked at that end and realized or looked at the pins on or the the receiving end here and realized that uh, yeah those things were uh, pins were not quite lining up but that's it folks that's as easy as uh, this thing is uh, to uh, to get together now let's go ahead and take an attempt at uh, getting the uh, the wing tips on and again I've seen folks put those on and um, mine are brand new so probably when they're new they're probably a little tougher to get on and they probably loosen up over time I'm willing to bet but let's see how this uh, goes into place um, I tried it like I said on the camera I'm going to actually put a little bit of spit on the end of these things because they probably need a little bit of, of uh, something slick on there, maybe even uh, Vaseline or something. But let's see if these wings will kind of go into place now. and We'll just push them on. Here we go. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. That one snaps into place. Not too bad. Not too bad. I think if you put something slippery on it, it's probably going to be a little easier to get into place. So I'm just licking this a little bit and making sure it's something kind of slippery on there a little bit you don't need oil I don't think or anything but let's see how this is going to go on grabbing the tip of this thing 
and there we go it snaps right into place and that is it for the main construct part of the construction here the last part of the assembly process is essentially, is essentially just assembling the uh, the prop and spinner and that's done real easily just by uh, adding the uh, propeller blades you just put the screws right through you take your uh, your lock nuts here throw that in position there I'll drop one in there drop one in there you see it take a couple minutes to do this as you can see and then uh, just taking your uh, two millimeter metrics driver here and tightening those up you don't want to over tighten them because you could split the plastic in there so you just want to make sure that they they bite pretty good again not over tightening making sure they're all good in there and you can see there you got all your uh, lock washers your eight screws and they're all in place then it's uh, just simply bolting it on to the airplane and really all that comes down to is just taking the nut and the washer off here you got a real nice hex drive so you put that thing right on there till it till it locks in place you can feel uh, that thing go down into the hex drive and then you just tighten this thing up and uh, you grab your uh, your driver here your uh, your wrench here tightening that up and then you simply just take your uh, your last screw and you take your spinner you put that thing in place let's we'll see if we can get that uh, to pop down in screw goes in that's your last short one uh, that goes on I think it's uh, the other ones were 40 millimeters this one was a little short I think it was like 30 or 35 or something and then once that's in place folks uh, that is it your airplane is uh, mostly completely assembled now that the assembly is completed and we're ready to uh, bind the thing, before we bind the receiver to the radio, I wanted to clean up a couple things here. Uh, these ferrite beads that are in here, this whole box was flopping around in there and uh, getting in the way of the battery floor going in and out. So I took some double-sided foam tape you can see right along here. I secured it to the side so it doesn't move anymore. It doesn't get in the way of the battery floor and it also doesn't flop around. I didn't secure it to the floor because if you secure it to the floor, then if you need to take your center wing section off you can't it's stuck to that so uh, I went ahead and did that and as well as you can see here I put a bunch of uh, 3M Blenderm along the floor here you can see uh, right on in here that's to keep those wires down and again to keep them out of the battery tracks that run right along here and then of course uh, along the side uh, wall here I did really um, the same thing you can see I put uh, some 3M Blenderm tape you can use scotch or whatever you want Blenderm seems to work well. This came with the airplane, some here, along here, and along here. It'll keep all those wires secured along the side. Uh, I noticed that as I was initially putting the battery floor in and out, uh, that the thing was uh, just, uh, it was getting caught on all that. The lower straps were striking all that stuff. They were getting uh, stuck on everything, and it was kind of a pain in the butt. So now you can see it just slides in and out cleanly, locks into place nice, and uh, we don't really have to worry about it getting caught on uh, any other wires or anything or on that uh, ferrite box down there you don't have to do any of this stuff folks but uh, this is just something I like to do to clean things up so I can get that battery in and out easy uh, for those of you who are wondering what this is this is the antenna <laughs> that goes on the uh, the back of the plane uh, I usually use the inside of my uh, cockpits and stuff uh, just to uh, to store pieces like this so they stay with the airplane and when I get to events I'll put it on and when I'm done, I'll take it off, put it back in there so I don't lose it. So uh, what I'm going to do to prep my battery floor as well in here is uh, also to uh, put uh, something to secure the battery on. If you guys uh, put your battery uh, on the uh, plastic uh, just like this, it's a good chance it's probably going to uh, slide around. So I'll show you, you know, I see a lot of guys uh, mounting their batteries and it just, it's it, on, on just leaving it on the plastic and it's not a good idea. If that slides around, it's shifting your CG and you can end up with a kind of an uncontrollable airplane here. So you either got to put some Velcro or in my case, what I like to use is shelf liner. I usually will use um, double-sided uh, scotch tape. I'll show you that to you right here. It's uh, both sides of this thing are, are sticky. And if you line your shelf liner with this stuff, you're going to have a really nice sticky battery floor and I'm going to put this on here as best that I can it is tough doing this on the camera kind of trying to do this right I usually don't do it uh, the, we're doing this on the camera raises the level of difficulty here so anyway I'm going to secure that down on there and now once we have it in place <clears throat> now you can see when you put your battery on I'm probably going to start off with a 5000 pack now when you put your battery on it ain't going to go anywhere it's secured it's tough and then when you strap it down it's not going to move you also save some space because velcro on these things peeling them on and off you actually add quite a bit of depth to your battery 
with uh, with Velcro. So I find the shelf liner stuff works fantastic, and that is how my battery floor is going to be. Now you can see when you put your uh, battery in place here, and I'm going to use probably this 5030C or 50C to start off with. You can see uh, how nicely this thing grips. Let me go ahead and get this installed. Uh, this really provides uh, the grip that you want for this thing. We'll go ahead and get this uh, this other strap on, slide it into place. I'm going to pull that kind of tight. You can break the floor too, so you really don't want to do that. You want to be careful. And you can see how tough it is um, just holding this and shaking it. it it's not going to come off there. That's how nice uh, the shelf liner stuff is. And uh, the thing I don't like about Velcro is uh, Velcro, although it works really well, sometimes peeling it off, you end up breaking your wood battery floor, your plastic tray, and so forth. Uh, but when you use uh, the shelf liner like this, uh, it's, it, the battery comes right off. It's just so tacky with this stuff on there. And you can see that baby just goes right into place. Now, just prior to binding, you want to select a, a new model memory. And when you do that, you also want to go into aircraft type. And here's where you want to select uh, your wing type. Uh, there's many different kinds of wing types. Um, you got your normal wing with two ailerons. And we want to go all the way to where we talked about earlier one aileron and one flap. Even though there are two flaps, they're on one channel, and that's really what it's referring to is one aileron channel and one flap channel. So we're going to go back. Uh, we're going to select the model that we chose. Again, I named it. You want to name it. Go to the main screen, and uh, there we go. We're uh, model 41. That's uh, E-Flight P51 1.5 meter, and now we are ready to bind. Okay, it is now time to bind everything up. First thing you want to do Take the propeller off because you never know when that thing's going to spin up and you know, you're going to end up uh, kind of getting hurt or damaging something. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the bind button this time uh, with enabling safe select. So you want to lower the throttle, get your trim neutral, connect your power, press and hold the bind button. You'll see the full orange flasher on the uh, receiver and then uh, you use your bind procedure on your uh, transmitter. So that means you just hold the bind button and turn the switch on, which I'll do. Um, and then you release the uh, bind button. So uh, let's see uh, how well uh, that goes down. Here we go. We'll go ahead and uh, plug this thing in. Sure is nice having all the correct connectors here uh, with those orange ones. Let that thing boot up. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this thing. And let's go ahead and press that bind button, which is right down here. I'm going to press and hold it if I can get in there. Press and hold. There we got the flasher. I'm going to go ahead and push my bind button on my radio and turn the power on. And let's see if we can get this thing to bind up. DSMX 22 milliseconds telemetry. Bind complete. And that is it. Now we release our uh, bind button and we are in like Flynn. Let's see if our controls are working. Yep. Ailerons are working. Elevators working. Rudders working. And uh, we got some power. We're good to go. And that is it, folks. It is that simple to bind this thing up. Now that we've got the airplane uh, bound up properly, it's time to power everything down and power everything back up again. So I got the radio on here, and I'm going to go ahead and replug the airplane back in. We'll get the initial uh, tones from the speed controller boot up, and we'll get two checks of the flight controls and six tones for the uh, battery cells. Here we go. Plugged in. Initial tones. Flight control check twice. You can hear it, and there's your six tones, and we are all booted up. And what we're looking for right here is these five bars in the upper right, uh, left-hand corner for the uh, for the uh, DX9, and that's telling us that we have telemetry. So um, we can scroll our wheel past the monitor screen, and here we have flight log, receiver voltage. Uh, and all kinds of other stuff. Now, I did do an update on this. I think the new version is 2.05, so you may want to do a firmware update to make sure your menus are up to speed. I had to do that to mine. And you can see all the voltage, motor amps, uh, RPMs, all kinds of stuff, uh, throttle percent, output, and uh, uh, I do have voltage on my battery, my six cell battery at 22.8, so it's probably going to give me an alarm here somewhere, which is a nice feature because it tells you, hey, dumb, you just put a dead battery in the plane, don't fly it. There's your individual cells, 
RPM and so forth, AS3X gains, uh, minimum and maximum gyro stuff, and then G-forces. I don't know if it actually gives you G-forces, but we'll see. There's a whole plethora here of menus. Now, when you click on this, you'll want to go into dual rates and set those up the way the book says. There's a new menu here, AS3X gains. Um, I don't know anything about that. I haven't messed with them yet, and I may play with those a little bit. We'll talk about that maybe during the flight or if I have something to add, but I think we just plug in and go. Uh, flap system, uh, same thing. You want to set those up. I set everything up just the way the book says, and that's pretty much how I set mine with a speed of two and then all your flap positions. I assign switch D for mine because I just I like that switch, and uh, I think that's what most people do use. And uh, another thing, there is a telemetry menu, and I had to go into this and hit auto config, boom, and it just configured everything and gave me all those uh, menus there in the beginning. Okay, there's our warning. I wanted to show you guys that. I was waiting on that. Smart battery alarm, battery not charged, do not fly, bonehead, there you go, that's it. 22.8 volts, so we'll go ahead and I'll clear that out. I'll hit uh, some of these buttons, will back us out of there. And uh, that's a good feature to have. Now, one other thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, set up your uh, assignment switch if you wanna use uh, your safe select switch designation. And all that is is moving your sticks to both the lower corners, uh, lower inside corners, and then select your switch uh, up and down your switch you want it to be up and down five times so now i actually did that already and uh, all i did was move my sticks to the inner positions and this is the switch that i actually used and i just cycled that up and down five times so when i move it i get a little twitch and uh, what that's indicating since i did it already um, what happens is, is when you're in up the up position of switch is usually the wing leveling mode uh, and that makes it not go past a certain bank or pitch. And then any of the lower switches, especially if you use a, or positions, if you use a three position switch, then it's gonna be off and it's gonna be basically in regular stabilization AS3X mode. And uh, that is pretty much most of what you wanna set up in here. Okay folks, just a quick uh, view here, the underside of the airplane and some of the control surfaces, such as the flaps, uh, the ailerons, uh, the elevator moving, the rudder. You want to make sure everything's neutral and make sure the control throws are where they're supposed to be. I'm going to show you here a real quick landing gear check. We can see how nicely everything works. Absolutely beautiful. And a few things to note here, uh, like I always kind of tell everybody, use a little bit of foam tack. Put a little bit on your E-ring here for your wheel. Put them on your other E-rings here. There's also an E-ring on the tail wheel just to keep those E-rings from coming off. And you can see we got really nice uh, compression, nice suspension all the way around. Really nice landing gear, really nice inner door workings. Let's go ahead and cycle that again and get that up there. And just simply awesome. Those tail wheel doors work fantastic too. Just simply awesome how nice everything works on this airplane. Okay, folks, uh, that pretty much uh, concludes this uh, review video, unboxing, assembly, and setup of the uh, E-Flight 1.5 meter P51D Mustang with smart technology, folks. This is the first one I've had out of the chute that has all the technology built into it, and it gets full use out of the batteries. We will be getting this thing out uh, to fly for you on 5,000 and 7,000 smart batteries. So stay tuned for that. Check those out in the uh, RDRC RC Informer YouTube channel or on the in the upper right hand corner where you see the eye right here. You can click on that right now even and drop that baby down. And uh, you can see our uh, drop down menu of other videos and the flight demo. We'll get it up there as soon as we do get it done. A uh, couple things just to kind of run around here. Really nice bright uh, wingtip lights all the way around. The color on this thing is awesome. Fit and finish was outstanding, with the exception of that little debacle we had with the uh, wing uh, going on. But they, the newer versions of this, they started using, uh, which is what I have, they started using longer uh, uh, pins on that center section. And if they're a little bit out of alignment, it may not fit. So just check that. I think mine was a little bit of a one-off, uh, but otherwise the airplane uh, built uh, really simply so anyway if you guys choose to get one of these we do appreciate you using our links below in the description you click on that link throw it in your cart and buy it at no extra cost to you it does support our channel and we really appreciate that folks really appreciate you guys watching this channel again stay tuned for the flight videos we'll get a few of those out there on both pavement and grass and i think i'm going to have this thing 
flying it and all in the fall. Really sweet airplane, folks. We do appreciate you guys watching RC Informer, and as usual, as always, folks, we will see you guys next time. Been in this headwind, so it should give me a little extra lift coming in here. All right, we're gonna put the flaps up, go vertical. Here we go. Full power going straight up with it. And it'll just go up and up and up all day long. We got good cloud reference. You can see it's still going up there. That is just simply outstanding. Good flying airplane. That is quick. This is a Reno racer, man. I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to paint one of these up in a in a voodoo or something. Man, that is nice. I really like that. All right, let's bring it uh, bring it on by here once again, powering it up.